So I feel like every photographer on YouTube has made one of these videos at some point and I haven't yet. So I figured it might've been a little overdue. So I wanted to make a what's in my camera bag video. So first I'll talk to you guys about my actual camera bag. It is a basic gear. Uh, I found it on Amazon. It was pretty cheap, it was like a hundred bucks. I was originally looking at getting one of the Ona camera bags, but those are pretty expensive and they're pretty much sold out just about everywhere. So I wanted to look for a cheaper alternative until I could maybe get something nicer a little longer down the road. But I came across this basic gear camera bag and it's actually really, really nice. Um, I'm surprised. But I found this camera bag and for only $120, it's actually really nice. It's, it smells and feels like genuine leather, at least I think it is, uh, as far as I know. Uh, but I've had it for a little bit now. I've been using it. Um, before that, I just had a Peter McKinnon, like the, the travel cube that I put my camera gear in. It was okay, but I definitely needed something a little bit nicer and easier to transport without having to go through the hassle of turning it into a backpack. So I found this. Um, I've already kind of decorated it and made it my own a little bit. I have a couple pins here on the front. Uh, but let's go ahead and open it up and I'll show you guys what I carry around with me when it comes to photo shoots. I'll also have this camera bag linked down below in the description if you like it and want to buy one for yourself. So let's go ahead and open it up and check it out. Now the most important thing to my camera bag, obviously, is my Sony a7C. Um, I typically keep my 24 2.8 on here. Uh, it's the smallest lens I have and it's just easiest to fit in the camera bag and take out when I need to. Uh, but yeah, my Sony a7C, I keep the 24 2.8G on here. Also have my Clever Supply Co. strap on here that I uh, pretty much keep on my, my camera all the time. Uh, but when I'm not using that, I also have my, where's that in here? I have my Peak Design uh, wrist strap as well that you guys see in my videos occasionally. But yeah, that's my camera and my straps. I also have my 35 millimeter uh, 1.4 G Master lens in here as well. That's pretty much my most used lens. Although uh, later in the video, I might be switching it out for a different lens. So stick around. Um, I'm still not completely sold on it just yet. I'll talk about that here in a little bit, so we'll see. Uh, then below that in my camera bag, I typically just keep them stacked on top of each other. Uh, but I also have my 20 millimeter 1.8 as well if I want something a little bit wider than the 24. I'm actually thinking about switching this lens out as well eventually, so maybe in next year's what in my, What's in My Camera Bag video, um, I'll have a 50mm 2.5 uh, from the same line as this lens because I feel like it's not completely necessary to actually be carrying around a 24 and a 20. Um, if you see my previous videos, I do have my 85 millimeter lens, but I don't really use it a whole lot, so I don't think it's worth keeping here in my camera bag when you only have so much space. So I don't carry that around. If I need it, I'll bring it to a shoot. Uh, but as of right now, I hardly ever used it, and last time I used it was in my last POV street photography video, which was back in, back in March. So not really too worried about that. So eventually, I'd like to have the 50, so that way I would have the 24, the 35, and the 50 and I have that like medium range of focal lengths covered and anything else I can grab and use another time. Uh, so I have three main pockets in the camera bag then in the third pocket I carry just a bunch of bunch of random accessories pretty much. Uh, let's see I have a couple different lens filters here. I have an ND filter that I don't really use. It is a gobe, gobe, not sure how it's pronounced, uh, lens filter. It's nice. It's decent. Um, don't really know when I'll need to break it out, but I carry it with me anyways. Uh, I have my Black Pro Mist I carry as well, my one fourth. Um, I keep that on a lot of the time. Sometimes I just leave it on my camera because you can place the lens cap on over the Pro Mist filter. So that's really convenient. And then lastly, I carry a polarizer filter with me. It is the Moment Anti-Glare filter. It's pretty nice, I like it a lot. Um, serves its purpose for polarizer stuff when you're trying to shoot through windows or something or cars and you don't want the reflection on there. Uh, that's pretty much what I use it for. Also getting some of the light refracting off of uh, leaves on trees if you're shooting more midday. So that's helpful. Uh, then below that, I also carry just an extra lens and camera body cap as well. Never know when you might need that. And then I also carry my Insta360 go-to camera with me. And then I also have a 
the neck strap as well with that for, say if I wanna shoot any kind of POV street photography videos. Haven't made one in a while. Hope to make a new one soon, but I wanna do it in somewhere more interesting than the city I live. So next time I'm traveling, there's a lot of sirens. That's what I get for trying to shoot this in the city. Uh, <laughs> next time I'm traveling and I'm in a more busy, populated, dense city that's better for street photography, I'll make a new video, I promise. Uh, but I have that in there. And then lastly, I keep an extra battery with me in here. Um, the A7C's battery life is really, really good. I rarely ever actually need to swap out the batteries on a day trip for photography. So that hasn't been a big concern. Uh, but keep an extra battery in, here, battery in here always. You never know. Let's see what else we got. Uh, we also have the eye cap for my camera, which you guys know about is extremely vital and important to the Sony a7C. So I carry this around with me always. Never know when you might need it. And then I carry the small rig L bracket slash grip extension as well. Uh, because you never know when you might need to set your camera on a tripod. Also rarely do that as well, but you know, got to carry it with you just in case. And it fits pretty perfectly here in the cam camera bag. Um, let's see, what else do I keep in the pockets here? Okay, so I also have a little utility bag. It's a Peak Design bag. I found it incredibly useful. I hear another fire truck coming. Maybe, maybe not. Okay, anyways, we'll keep going. Uh, but I keep a lot of... I keep extra Peak Design anchors in here. Um, and then, as photographers know, if you carry any kind of gear, probably need to keep a couple Allen wrenches with you as well. Um, that's pretty important and useful. I also have a um, rise for if I have my camera on my Ronin S. So I have that extra, Extra hot shoe cover as well, because you never know, you might lose yours. I do that occasionally. Uh, but yeah, that's what I keep in there. Uh, let's see, then also carry an extra SD card around with me as well. Um, also pretty important, I keep extra SD cards everywhere. I keep an extra one in my bag. I keep an extra one in my car as well, because you never know when you might forget your SD card. It's happened, it's happened to my wife as well. Uh, but yeah, super important. And uh, let's see, I also carry around this cleaning kit with uh, microfiber cloths and like a glove that came with something I bought for, you never know if you might need to clean your, your lens or something. Um, I don't carry anything to clean my actual camera sensor here in my bag because I have a whole kit for that and that's a little too large that I also keep in my car as well. Uh, it pretty much stays in my car or in my apartment. So. That's, a, that's pretty much my camera bag. I don't really keep anything in the side pockets. Uh, in this side pocket, I actually have just extra padding. That was an old camera bag of mine just because I don't really want to keep anything in open pockets that might fall out. Um, though I'm not too concerned about that. And then there is also a back pocket as well on here that I also keep padding in. Um, I find it pretty important since this isn't the most like thick camera bag uh, without any of the padding in there. It was a little fl flimsy, but I still really like this camera bag regardless. It's really nice. Um, yeah, uh, as I start putting all of this stuff back in, I absolutely love this camera bag. I prefer camera bags that are more messenger bag style. I'm not a big fan of carrying around uh, backpacks. I don't like walking around taking photos with a backpack on me. I've had several of those in the past, and that's one of the reasons why I wanted something other than the Peter McKinnon Cube. So in a way, having a messenger bag is less convenient because it is kind of swinging around on you more, but I typically don't also don't exactly walk around with my camera bag on me always. Uh, it depends on if I'm shooting a video that's a little different. You guys might not see it, but it's typically sitting with my uh, FX3 filming. So I don't always, so I don't always have that on me. Um, but for such a cheap bag, the Basic Gear Leather Messenger camera bag is actually really, really nice. I'm very happy with it. It's perfect for if you're carrying around a Sony a7C and you don't have a ton of big lenses like me. Uh, I was a little nervous about buying it at first since there's not really any reviews of it on YouTube, but I'm happy with my decision so far. Uh, and if any of you guys have seen it on Amazon before and might be interested in something like this and you don't want to pay four or $500 for the Ona, uh, leather camera bags. Highly recommend this one. Um, like I said, it is a little flimsy, but once you get it built out and filled up with gear, it 
doesn't really flop around that much. Nothing to worry about. The straps are nice. The, the metal locks on here are great. Uh, and the leather seems to be of a pretty decent quality from what I can tell as well. Now to what I mentioned earlier in the video about how I might be swapping out my 35GM for a different lens. Let me go grab that real quick. So yeah, I might actually be swapping out my 35 1.4 GM uh, for the 35 1.8 uh, lens. Now, the reason I decided to get this was because me and my wife, uh, we both shoot Sony and we share a lot of lenses and the 35 millimeter focal length is a super popular uh, focal length that's pretty much mine and hers uh, go-to lens. We've never actually fought over who gets 35 before, but you know, it can get a little testy sometimes. So I decided to go ahead and pick up the 35 1.8. I almost got the Sigma 35 F2, but I decided to go with this one uh, because of the 1.8. The only downside to it is that I don't like the fact that there is no aperture ring on there. So that kind of sucks, um, but it's not a big deal. I do wish it was like a, a G series lens and it had the aperture ring and it was probably if it looked more like this lens, I think that would be a lot better, but I think this predates before Sony started just pumping out every G lens they could. And not to mention, I think the 35 1.8 fits perfectly on the Sony a7C. Um, let me go ahead and put this on for you guys real quick. But yeah, as you can tell, the 35 1.8 kind of fits just like perfectly on the a7C, not nearly as front heavy as the 1.4 G Master. So the first time I put this on, I was like, ooh, I think I might actually like this lens more than the 35 uh, G Master. Um, not too worried about of the 0.4 stop difference when it comes to the aperture, not a big deal to me. I think the size difference of this more than makes up for that 0.4 stop difference, which really is not that big of a deal in my opinion. Uh, and it's also just as sharp as the G Master as well. I have no issues with the sharpness of this lens at all. And so it makes a pretty, pretty perfect little just carry around camera. Uh, it doesn't, it doesn't tilt forward too much when you're wearing it, which is nice, which you run into that when you're wearing heavier lenses. I think this lens just kind of makes sense for the Sony a7C and I can always uh, borrow the G Master if I need to. Uh, which I realistically don't see myself needing to that often unless I'm shooting something at night perhaps and I want that extra little bit of light coming in. Uh, but yeah, I really like it. Uh, the one thing I don't like is that this lens does not use a 67 millimeter uh, filter thread, which I used to carry only 67 millimeter filter thread lenses just for that convenience of having all of my filters fit on every single lens. I don't have that anymore. Now I just have a bunch of mixed different uh, filter threads. But I did pick up a ProMist for this one as well. I picked up the 1 8th instead of the 1 4th. So I'm gonna see how that is. I think I might like that because it's even more subtle than the 1 4th. So we'll see. Um, so we'll see. But anyways guys, thanks for watching the video. I hope you enjoyed this video. I hope you found something helpful. If you have any questions down below, just comment. If you have any questions about the bag, let me know um, if I can point you guys in the right direction if you're looking for a similar camera bag. If you enjoyed this video, uh, feel free to check out my other videos. I also have a lot of videos about the Sony A7C uh, if you're interested in learning more about this camera and what lenses maybe you should buy for this camera, feel free to go check those out. I also have a lot of photography focused videos as well on my channel where I actually go out and take photos. Those are my favorite videos to make and I hope to make a few more soon coming up. I have a cool, I have a cool trip planned here soon. But yeah, I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Please remember to like the video and subscribe so I can continue growing and reaching a larger audience on YouTube. And I hope you found this video helpful and I hope I can inspire you to get out and take more photos as well. Go out and shoot. Oh,